year. Yes. And I, you know, they didn't travel too well at all. And I got to give the guys credit because they have a lot of really good athletes. But when you only bring 10, 11 guys to a game, I mean, realistically in this league, how can you expect to win or do any good? You got to be able to bring more, 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 more bodies to the field. I mean, you got to be able to get rest. I know I played two offensive plays all season long. You know, most of our guys on our team, we only play defense. And offense only plays offense. And I think that has a lot to do with their record right now. And like you said, with their recruiting and with their hunger to get better. If they get more players out there, especially next year, watch out for this team too. They're going to be they're going to be some somebody to watch out for because they have a lot of talent. Well, it kind of goes into uh, a lot of these new expansion teams. And we're going to get a little bit into that conversation uh, off of a board meeting we just recently had uh, right after the previews. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a lot of... Um, teams that come into this league think it's more of a secondary league and I, I can tell you from my recruiting uh, wise I've uh, recruited from the Mid-States Football League, Ironman Football League, I played in the Mid-States Football League, I played against the Burlington Blue Devils, I played against the Racing Thread, I played against the Chicago Thunder. I've been scouted by all of them. I, I'll tell you what, uh, <laughs> talent in this league for the teams that are, are strong, there is not a, a better league out there. I mean, this is a very competitive league, and uh, you get a lot of teams that go in there with that kind of attitude and think that you could travel with 15 players. No, 25 sir. second huddles is not a very long time, and I'll tell you what, if you don't have a proper rotation, that will <laughs> kick your butt. <laughs> tell me about it, I can't stand when our offense goes for a quick three and out. we got to get right back out there on the field. I don't like that at all. <laughs> yeah, this week I think it was a little bit more of the opposite. <laughs> last week we In had fact, a little I break. I feel your pain. Yeah, last week we I had mean, a I really break. feel your pain. <laughs> um, before we go, and we're going to get into a little bit of the talk for next season, I'd like to just talk a little bit about the uh, Kenosha Sabres. These guys, um, right now it's looking like they're going to end the season at what we hope to be 9-1 and because we like to be you know, the one team to beat them this year. we got to play them after our bye week next week. Um, these guys are playing good. They're putting up a lot of points. Um, I watched two of their games um, after our games because they usually they play after us or before us. And um, I'll tell you, they're very organized. They have a lot of really good talent. Their running back is quick as lightning. Um, what's what's the what's the other owner of the league? Um, Rick what's his name? Rick. Rick does a good job with his team. I mean, them guys they they come with the full the full roster and they come ready to play and. Hey, come, come playoff time, this might be a tough game. It's might tell be a you, very tough game. I, they've always had a talented team. I think the biggest problem they always had was really the team really meshing. Because, right. Because uh, he's done right. a lot uh, over the years uh, where he's done a lot of recruiting in the offseason. And uh, I can tell you, watching some of their games uh, last year, of course, we do the double headers with the Sabres, mm -hmm. you had a lot of uh, complaining back and forth. Uh, this season, you, don't, you are not seeing that at all. No. And that's... And the record is really what's telling it. And everybody could talk about the, uh, the how easy a schedule is, uh, uh, but you know the they they put up uh, 34 points against the uh, I think it was 34 points against the Rage. Right, right. Uh, and they played the Rampage and they beat them as well. So uh, the Rampage are just as good as probably uh, you know most teams in the National, and the Rage are definitely. Uh, you know, maybe with the exception of uh, the, the Cowboys and the Lynx. Right. But they're just as good as anybody else, and they're they're proving it. They are proving it. That's why I can't look forward to next season, because right now, I mean, if you want to be realistic about it, you got the Cougars, the Lynx, and the Cowboys, and we pretty much have been dominating everybody this year. Now the Sabres have been doing the same thing. Next year, I really got a feeling it's going to be a lot more of an equal playing field, because these teams are starting to come along. Um, you know, and like the one thing about the Cougars, just, just to get back to that, or I mean about the... Uh, Sabres. Yeah, Sabres, <laughs> just to get back to that. I was watching one of their games, and one of their uh, D-backs, he had a chance for uh, interception, hit him, right in his, hit him right in the face, and he missed it. And that happened to be fourth down, so the other team punted it, but when he came off, I mean, this kid was so upset that he didn't get the pick. And you can see his whole team pick him up and say, go get it next time, go get it. To me, that just shows that they're hungry, that they want it, just because it wasn't just like a good play, you knocked it down. They wanted that pick, they wanted to take it to the house, and everybody wanted to show support for that guy. And I just like that as a team. I mean, I like our team to do things like that too. Somebody doesn't do exactly what they should do, pick them up, get going with it. And I like that, and that's kind of a scary team to play against. I'd rather play against a team that's going to get all over each other for not making the play as opposed to combining as a group and going out and, you know, achieving your goal. Yeah, definitely. And it does definitely make a difference, uh, you know, when you're, when you're talking about that, uh, the, the meshing of the team. Well, we got the neighbor uh, mowing the lawn right now, so please excuse the noise, but uh, we're just about done anyway, so. And it's a little bit of the, of the downfall and the good thing. We're doing an interview in our backyard. 
barbecuing out here, having a good time. We got to deal with the people mowing the grass and whatnot. But let's go ahead and let's talk about what we're going to be doing next year for some of the expansion teams and how we're going to go ahead and divide our conferences up, hopefully to make it a little more of a level playing field and also to give the um, expansion teams maybe a little more of a chance in a way, I mean, for lack of a better term, because I know if I was out there getting beat, you know, 30 to nothing, 40, 50, 60 to nothing, I sure wouldn't want to be playing the next week. I mean, that's just me personally. I don't like losing it nothing. And I don't blame these guys for maybe folding or whatnot. That's my personal opinion on it. It becomes a challenge. Uh, you know, it, the, the official announcement really hasn't been out there. Um, I'm actually going over uh, what's going to be going on the GFL site uh, today. I'm going to get that, make sure I get that up. But really what it's going to come down to is we're going to have a couple of different uh, leagues. Like this year we have the American National, and it was divided based on more of location uh, to try to minimize travel as much as possible. That's going to be broken up into divisions uh, next year instead of conferences. So okay. what's going to end up happening is you're going to see all these new teams uh, go into either the American or National Conference into one conference where they're going to have a little bit more to, uh, to play each other. Um, what this is going to do is uh, it, it's going to bring a recipe for uh, being a successful team. It's going to uh, allow us, uh, Rick and Rosa and myself, to uh, help them uh, go ahead and become somebody. The, the board of directors is going to be uh, going into next year, uh, going to their practices. And okay. uh, oh, we're nice, going to be nice. uh, working more as a uh, team at, uh, for the board uh, more than uh, just the commissioner and co-commissioner. So that's, that's we're leaving a little bit off of Rick and myself. But I believe with this kind of recipe to be able to help them uh, find a field if they can't find a field, uh, you know, and centralize them or whatever the case might be, that's what the Cougars had. And that's what this whole league had. You look at the links, you look at the Cowboys. If you would have seen the Cowboys year one, which I know you weren't around, I mean, absolutely pitiful was the, is the word that comes to mind. Yeah. I, they couldn't even finish the season. Uh, Tom Morley, i got to put you out there. Uh, I mean, the man was uh, 48 years old, decided to go ahead and uh, play, and uh, got to make fun of you on that. I'm still making fun of you to this day, five years later. But anyways, I mean, but look at what they became. I mean, everybody wanted to take that one step up. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, things like this video cast, uh, you know, everybody trying to one-up everybody is going to make this league something special. And we're year five. Uh, IFL, uh, MSFL, Wisconsin Football League, you know, they've been around for 10, 15 years. This is where it's going to be coming. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't know um, what role Adam Knowles is going to be having in this board of directors, but I'd like to tell you right now, Adam, I'd like to see you get more involved. Not, not more involved, but involved more with developing expansion teams and helping out with different organizations that need your help because obviously you're on this uh, pro boards thing and you're helping out, you're helping out a lot with the league and with the podcast. And with well, the GFL MW is pretty much run by Adam. Yeah, Adam. I mean, he's doing a fantastic job. Yeah. He, he, he's one up to everybody uh, in the state when it came to website content. Yeah, I mean, he's doing awesome, and I would, I would like to see you take, take that, take that uh, oh, yeah. energy and that knowledge that you have of football and of getting everybody together and making things happen, and maybe even help out with some of these expansion teams and show them the ropes a little bit, show them how to develop a team, show them how to get your team, you know, with a little team unity and you know, uh, scouting and getting new players on, you know, on different teams and whatnot. Because he's doing a fantastic job so far. Well, it's one word, passion. Yeah, and, and it, the uh, the passion uh, among these owners, you take the board of directors, they were chosen not uh, just purely on their skill, but uh, the passion for the league. Right. And it's going to be that passion that's going to carry this league somewhere else and uh, develop these new teams. The, these uh, this board of directors, they volunteered to help these other teams. They didn't. They weren't told. That nobody was told to do anything. They right. want to take it up a notch. Uh, they don't want this easy schedule that you know. You know, the Lynx have had an uh, easy schedule, the Cowboys, everybody, because it's so spread thin uh, with some of these, all these new teams that we had, uh, the competition level, you know, is, is actually kind of probably gone down a little bit over uh, the past year or so. And it's not because of what, you know, the commissioner or the co-commissioner did, it's, it's because it's spreading thin. And we got to bring that back, uh, you know, a little bit tighter, and we're going to have some hard-hitting football, and that's what it's all about. Until Saturday morning, <laughs> you disagree. <laughs> but this is true. You know that's uh, that's the wrap up of uh, what we had to uh, say. Uh, we're going to be doing this weekly. Uh, you're going to see at the beginning of this, uh, we're, we have some interviews going on. Um, you know, with some of the players, we're trying to get. Uh, we even got interviewed some of the Scorpion uh, players this week. Um, we're going to try to see if we can get some post game uh, from some of these teams as well. 
but it would be nice. Uh, you know, we're gonna make this a lot uh, more content, and uh, it's gonna be a weekly thing. You'll see some in the uh, in the off season, and as always, you'll have Jason Holland. Uh, I think everybody knows who he is. So, uh, and he's you know been a great uh, addition to the team. What was it now third year? Now? This is my second year. Second only. year, second year only. He made a name for himself in less than a year and a half. So. I, that's about all I got to say. Uh, Jason, do you have any last no, words? No, sign off. Thank you guys for your time. If you have any input, please let us know how we can make this better. And uh, thank you very much.